Hi, my name is Liam Goodman. Very thankful to be on Drove TV. I had a great time. Uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends about Drove TV. Uh, growing in this community is what's so important and sharing with each other is everything. So like, comment, tell us what you thought of the interview. And if you want to check out my artwork, you can go to thesenseofcanvas.com or cannabis.creations on Instagram. Welcome to My First Time, the show about your first time getting high on marijuana. I'm your host, Mike Freeman with Drew TV. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest, Liam with Cannabis Creations and the Censored Canvas. How are you, my friend? Amazing. Amazing. I'm glad you got that. The Censored Canvas is, is something new and it's exciting. It's going to be the next step in what I do. Awesome. Well, uh, we're excited to talk about that. You can find more of Liam currently on Instagram at cannabis.creations. And uh, Liam, thanks again for coming on Drow TV. Please let our audience know where you're located and what you got going on in the cannabis community. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm located just outside of Toronto, Ontario, okay. Canada, Canada. So I uh, <clears throat> I've been drawing realism for uh, since I was a teenager. Pretty interested in uh, artwork my whole life, but realism was something that was more of a challenge. And I think it was honestly for attention. It sounds sounds bad, but I mean, like I was I was kind of a bully at at one point, and like I just. I was bullied myself and, you know, it was easy to flip that around and kind of, I, I was getting bullied. So I knew how to bully people. And that was, I, kn I knew that was wrong, but I didn't realize what it was until I was older, that it was just attention. I just wanted attention. And, you know, I liked talking and I, I knew that making artwork was like a, a healthier way to do that. You know, I could stop picking on people and, uh, it was like an avenue that just grew and grew and grew. And it was a lot of external pressure to succeed as an artist from other people. I didn't believe in myself. I just was told that I was good at art. And I always had that like uh, imposter syndrome where I'm like, oh, I'm not that good. I'm not that good. But it was also balanced with a little bit of like uh, practical understanding of successful real artists out there where people would tell me that I'm the best artist they've ever seen. And I'd ask them like, have you been on the internet? Like there's- yeah, yeah. So I always had that in my mind, but I think that's a good thing for realism because I was able to continuously evolve and get better and better and better and better and better uh, until after high school, instead of going to college or university, I got into an art academy where I started teaching right away, right out of high school. Awesome. Yeah. So that, that's been good. The cannabis thing fell into my lap where like I was uh, really heavy into uh, drugs and alcohol and bad breakups, toxic relationships, and uh, getting clean and sober, I started growing weed. And I like moved back home and really told, you know, myself that I'm going to take the art serious, but I was also losing my mind from getting clean. And so I started growing weed. And then I went to one of those, I don't know what they call them, uh, like vapor lounges, you know, like a consumption lounge where you can like sure. hang out and smoke. And uh, we went there for my birthday. It was totally wicked. He, uh, just smoking and chilling. And the the host would do like uh, giveaways. And I ended up winning the giveaway. Uh, and it's hilarious. They'd have like $500 worth of like bud and edibles that you could just win. And all you had to do was beat another guy at like a thumb war or like <laughs> rock, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Okay. So it, it was so cool. And uh, I ended up winning. And uh, the funny part was that the uh, manager uh, came up to me after because there's this whole thing about the artwork. And the reason I won was not from a thumb or a rock, paper, scissors. Uh, the host was like, does anybody have a talent? And then me and the other guy came up and he gave the mic to the other guy. He's like, what's your talent? The other guy was like, uh, I can juggle. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this guy means a talent that I could show 200 people here in front of everybody what am I gonna do? like do you have a chart marker <laughs> luckily yeah, yeah. there were they, they had flat screen tvs and they could pull up my old instagram which was like my old instagram was just really experimental I've had you know I was teaching at the time and I, I didn't really have a lot of time to make my own artwork and I was just throwing up random stuff on there but they saw like the Bob Marley and the Seth Rogen and you know all the Snoop Dogg kind of sketches ended up winning the manager came up to me after and was like do you have any weed art I'm like, what the hell is weed art? 
weed art sounds like when you go into like a convenience store and there's like SpongeBob with tattoos smoking yeah, a joint yeah. on, on like a bandana. Yeah, you sure. know, or like those t-shirts at like Walmart, like yeah. with like cartoons getting high. I, that's what I thought right away. I'm like, no, I don't have any of that. But I can go home and think about it. Like I can draw. They specifically asked for like Rick and Morty getting high. And okay. I was like, I don't, I don't have any of that, but I could easily draw it. On my way home, I was thinking, you know what? Like I'm a realistic artist. I draw things in realism. What about cannabis in, in realism? So I Googled it. Uh, weed art is what I started with. And sure enough, there was uh, like Daffy Duck with wad the money and then you know like so instead of that i was like okay i'm gonna change the word weed and i'm gonna go with cannabis because cannabis is a little bit like higher end sounding maybe there's more serious artwork with cannabis nothing i mean there was cannabis painted and drawn in realism but there was nothing no artist associated with it there was no brand behind it there was no i found an opportunity especially as an artist if you know any artists the reason a lot of them struggle is because there's not many avenues that they can take that aren't heavily oversaturated. I could draw boats and sunsets and trees, but sure. who the hell hasn't seen that or done that before? Yeah, yeah. So it was it was really a long story short, fell in my lap. And because of that, I've been just dialing it in. When I first started, I was like, I'm gonna draw 420 flowers and they're gonna be about this big. And I wanted to, I had the vision in my mind of walking into a room and having all of them on the wall and you could come and see them and it'd be three walls full of hundreds of drawings that evolved with uh, having to sell them i wanted to sell some and when you're just starting out on instagram i had like 500 followers and people were like oh i'm not paying 500 dollars for this like you only have 500 followers and i didn't it was common that was a common thing where i don't think they relate but to a, a spectator or a potential buyer apparently it mattered and then once I got up to like 20,000 followers, I, I now sell my drawings for like 10 grand. Awesome, dude. That's awesome. Pretty sweet. Yeah. And I definitely want to get uh, more into that and talk about uh, some other things that are going on with your page and some censorship. Uh, but the show oh, yeah. is my first time. So Liam, yep. please tell us about the first time you got high. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's, it's definitely a funny. Uh, so I was, uh, I was 13. And uh, I had my friend come over and uh, I knew he smoked and I didn't think, and it, I don't know, man, I don't know if his whole intention was like, I'm going to get Liam high today. Um, but that's how it happened. He came over and he was like, just sitting in my basement and he sat down and he looked up at me and he's like, he's like, do you want to smoke weed? And I'm like, ah, no. And then he, he like pulls out a dime bag, pulls up some papers, rolls it up, you know? And then he's like, all right, let's smoke this. And I'm like, I don't think so, dude. And he's like, all right, let's at least go get pizza. So pizza place is like five minutes from my house. And he just lit it. And he's like, here, man. I'm like, uh, all right. And you know how like some people don't get high their first time or like there's, I know people that have smoked like multiple times and they don't get high. And I don't know if that's like psychological. They don't know what to look for or what to feel, but I got ripped. Like okay, nice. To totally ripped. And uh, it was, it was amazing. Like um, it was pretty, uh, generic like i had really good laughs like before we even got to the pizza i was like rolling in a ditch laughing at something that i don't remember but it was that you know that feeling when you first get high and you're like laughing and it's like uncontrollable like in your gut rolling around on the ground and uh especially being so young it's so fucked to think about like 13 years old is pretty young and uh okay so the next part by no means is a man in a turban funny but we walked into the mall and there's a guy and his turban was like this big and i've never seen that before right and i thought it was a weed right i didn't i just thought it was like a normal guy in a turban but and I, but i didn't i've never seen a guy with a three-foot turban before and it was huge it was huge man like i was like even if it was just a hat i've never seen something this big on a person's head and at night and and like i was it was just i couldn't control my laughter because I didn't know what was real or not. You know what I mean? I was like, is that guy's turban three feet wide? And if it is, I've never seen that before. And like, right. I just, I couldn't control myself. So like, you know, luckily I didn't laugh in front of the guy. Right. But I was dying laughing. <laughs> and uh, to the point where my buddy was like, what the fuck are you still laughing? Like we walked through the mall to the pizza 
and I'm still laughing. And it was great. We had some good pizza. That's like, you know, memories of definitely getting baked and going to that place and eating pizza. I, they were open till like three in the morning. So my friends and I would always get high or drunk and walk down to the mall and get pizza. Amazing. Good time. And, and uh, I'll, I'll never forget it just because uh, me and that guy kind of ended up butting heads for a few years in a friendly way. Like we were in the same friend group, but I don't know if it was like jealousy or something, but then like after high school or like grade later in grade 12 or something, we became good friends and now he's a good friend and I like checking up on him and he's a good guy. So luckily he introduced me to getting high. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Yes, sir. Have you ever seen a turban that big since? No, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> I haven't, I can Google it. Of course it's a thing. Like, but I, I mean, of course it was a thing, but you know, um, I, I just had never seen that before and I couldn't stop laughing because I didn't know if it was real or not. That's because I didn't know and, the effects of weed. And your either. friend I didn't, didn't think it was that funny? It. Oh yeah, he did, but not as not as funny as me because it was yeah, like my yeah. first time. I was Yeah, like your dying. first time, sure. Yeah. Everything's yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah so everything's funny. Thing. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. And what yes, how sir. was the pizza? Was the pizza phenomenal or uh it's it's pretty uh generic pizza but it's like uh consistent really good like for me their garlic dip i could eat cardboard and just dip it in their garlic dip and nice. eat it that's how good it is yeah hell yeah yeah that's the problem i have is i'll eat something and i go this was i'll smoke i'll eat something and i go this was great and my girl doesn't smoke so then she'll eat it and she'll be like this is terrible why would you say <laughs> you know when you're yeah, stoned yeah. things taste differently you know uh, yeah, 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 I agree. But, uh, awesome. So, dude, uh, your artwork, uh, can you tell me again? What do you usually get for your artwork now? Now that you have 20,000 followers? Yeah, so that was a, a journey on its own. Like, I went uh, in to get, uh, like, I, I love tattoos. I'm big on tattoos. Like, I tried to cover my whole body in tattoos. Nice. And I'm, I love tattoos so I go to the local tattoo shop and I'm trying to get an apprenticeship and while I'm there I have my little portfolio of cannabis artwork and I open it up and I'm showing my tattoo artist at the time and he didn't give a shit like at all he's like oh yeah nice keep like working away and then there's this other guy who's new to the shop and he was in the booth behind him and he's like you know he's like what was that like and he like came over looked through it and was totally mind blown and I really liked his interest his interest reassured me that like what I'm doing is of some interest to someone sure and uh he became my mentor and through a little bit of mentorship he guided me where I was like I'd come back to the shop and I'd be like look man like uh it's hard to make money uh I'm gonna go for another apprenticeship and he's like dude he said this thing and he said why step over dollars to pick up pennies and I'm like, damn, he's right. Because with tattooing, you can only get to a certain level of like how much you can charge unless you own a shop. If you own a shop, sure. you can make mil millions and millions and millions of dollars. But when you are a tattoo artist, unless you're actively selling print artwork, making your own following and like making your own artwork that's outside of tattooing that you can scale, because that was it. It was scalability. It was the ability to not only raise my drawing prices, I'm not talking about the drawings because the drawings are very similar to like how you price out a tattoo in a sense where the if the drawing is uh, a few hundred dollars or whatever and the tattoo is a few hundred dollars the thing is is I could take a picture of the, the drawing and make prints of it and I could sell like today if I make a sale it's from a drawing I did five years ago four years mm -hmm. ago right so that's something that's like printing money essentially I have a really nice printer here and I could just print out a print and sell the print from a drawing I did years and years ago. So the scalability factors there where I can look at it and say, yeah, originals are sweet. I'm going to keep raising my prices on originals, but with print artwork, I, uh, you know, find distributors that can get into shops and I can make, get wholesale deals and, you know, get in dispensaries, lounges, cafes, okay. all these things where in the cannabis industry, you get completely fucked with taxes. And uh, when you buy artwork for your business, it's a hundred percent tax deductible. So you can nice. write off, you could write off the entire purchase. If you want a $20,000 set of prints or something like the one I just sent out was like a $2,000 print print. And uh, because it was like museum quality, 
Um, really nice quality. I'm really about that. But the open edition, there's a difference between my limited edition work and the open edition work. My open edition work is just printed on canvas and, and shipped out and uh, it's not that special, but it's um, more for decorating. If you're into collecting, I definitely have something on the more collector's end that's um, directly through me. My website is all open edition. Um, of course, the opposite of a limited edition where it's numbered and signed and more sure. of a collectible value. And uh, when I went in, like I said, I was struggling to sell something for $500. And uh, in the art world, you could sell a painting this big for a million dollars, right? Size doesn't matter. But to a spectator point of view or a uh, just a viewer looking inward, they think big means more. So at the time, my drawings were maybe like averaging 20 hours for a small drawing. And my mentor was like, oh, man, you got to draw them bigger. And I'm like, dude, no one's no one's buying this for 500 and it's taking me 20 hours. You tell me to do something this big will take me 80 hours. How the hell am I going to sell something for that? Like, you know what I mean? Nobody's buying this for 500. Who the hell yeah. is going to buy this for like what? 5,000? 5,000. And sure, yeah. it, it worked. So I went from drawings that were 20 hours to drawings now my drawings average around 70 70 75 hours wow. and uh what happened was that was all good things were good i was able to scale the uh amount of money that i was charging for my drawings uh as soon as you sell one i could set the next one i'm selling for that price right and then the next person if they want something a little bit more detailed or a little larger i'm going to go this much and then this much and then that's just how it keeps getting higher and higher um which eventually led me to getting, I believe, I don't know to yet what the actual problem was, to having my drawings removed from all social media. Like I've had my Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, uh, accounts, ad managers, uh, posts, everything removed. And uh, that was tough and I'm like what the fuck am I doing wrong right like and I I don't know some people are like oh it got it got to a, a point of uh indistinguishable from photos and and realism with drawings and they look like photos and everything that was being removed was because of sale of illegal drugs right so that's what the note that's what the ver or the violation would be right I'd get a notification that would say you're selling drugs we're taking this off and so I don't know if it was my name, Cannabis Creations. I don't know if it was the copy that I would write in the captions combined mm. with everything, but I do know that Facebook owns Instagram and Facebook prides themselves on being able to, I remember this quote by uh, Mark Zuckerberg. He got, he went public and said, uh, our new software can detect the difference between broccoli and marijuana, but apparently not drawings. Huh. So that's something I've been dealing with, which led me to the sense of canvas where like, I'm not kidding, man. I went through drawing flowers, getting dialing in the flower drawings because at first they weren't, I wasn't trying to make them photorealistic. I was just trying to make them in realism and get them out there because it wasn't a thing. I was just trying to draw as many as I can. Right. And, and then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'd rather draw one that's insane versus, you know, 10 that are, you know, mediocre. And that led me to, you know, getting that post removed. I remember that was an 82 hour drawing and I couldn't even post like the up close detailed parts of it. And uh, from there I was like, okay, I'm gonna switch to trichomes. I can draw trichomes, right? Some macro shots, software doesn't know what a fucking trichome is. Sure. So I uh, did that until near the end and near the end of the series, I got, got taken down again and then, uh, extract series i'm like ah oh, gotta keep doing something else like something else something else like it led me to the extract series which is like my favorite I, I i think like extract series is really where i was dialing that in and uh i haven't really spoken about this but i don't smoke weed anymore right so that's uh, a whole thing but my artwork got infinitely more serious and detailed when i quit smoking and uh, i had to quit smoking to run a business it sounds i can see your shirt but um, that's a, a whole Big. conversation on itself, man, is like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe stoners can be successful, but do you believe that you can out-compete your 
own self that's not smoking? I'll say this. I've, I've, this is the episode 120, only two episodes have I ever been stoned for because I can't perform my hosting duties and abilities when I'm stoned. I've done millions of things in my life stoned. Uh, this is one of them where not being stoned, I do better. So, no, oh, for uh, sure. I just, I, I just mean more like mentally where for uh, sure for, yeah. for like me personally, I'm not 100%. necessarily talking task oriented. I just mean like your daily, like how you function daily. Like I could have been a fucking astronaut and, sure. and, but it's cool. It's cool. I love weed and I can't wait to go back to smoking weed, but I needed to stop in order to scale my business and look at it. And yeah, I could, when I'm smoking, I could see a few steps ahead. But when I have this mental clarity from not smoking, I could see 30 steps ahead. And I know the, I know how to uh, like reverse engineer a goal where, okay, I want $10 million. If I want $10 million, how do I do that? And if I'm smoking weed, I'm like, dude, yeah, $10 million, that sounds sick. And then I don't give a shit about how to get there realistically, the actual plan. When I quit smoking, I'm like, okay, $10 million. What's the step before $10 million? Let's say it's just $1 million because that's easy to break down. What's the easiest way to make a million dollars? Hey, everybody. I want to quickly mention Food Forest Abundance. Food Forest Abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature, but designed specifically for you. Through multiple layers of trees, shrubs, herbs, vines, rhizomes, mushrooms, and perennial vegetables, you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden. From small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. What's the easiest way to make a million dollars? Let's go simplest, not easy. The simplest way to make a million dollars is to sell something for a million dollars. One thing. Right. Or you do the chocolate bar analogy, which is like selling a million things for one dollar. Right. So on and so forth. So you can sell, you know, a uh, thousand prints for a thousand dollars. There's a million things you could do, a hundred things for a hundred thousand dollars, right? Eat and vice versa. From that point, you say, okay, what are those things gonna be? Okay, well, I can make prints, I can do original artwork, I can get into galleries, I can make a coloring book, I could do all this kind of stuff that's all at these different price points. And then from there I can say, okay, how do we sell? a hundred thousand copies of a $30 coloring book. That's, you know, I profit $20 a book. We make $2 million. Boom. That's one of the, that's one thing there. I'm, you know, I just got to do that five more times and I got $10 million. So I could not think that like that smoking weed every day. I could not run a business like that every day, like learning e-commerce, getting high, opening my laptop and being like, dude, this is like Chinese. And then yeah. I'd like, I would stop. But, uh, that's its own thing, but I, but it's a, it's all a journey, man. Like I can't wait to smoke weed again. I love weed. I draw weed. I grow weed. Uh, you know, people send me weed, and I just sit and smell it. Like it's great. I love weed. Dude. Weed's amazing. Yeah. Hey, there's a a budding industry now. Uh, uh, yes, sir. All around cannabis. Uh, so, Lane, we got a few minutes left. Let's talk about um, the censored canvas. We're kind of going through a. A name change, uh, considering everything that we've just talked about. Uh, uh, yeah, so the the censored canvas is all about censorship. Where like we can, um, my man, my mentor, who's now my manager, right? So we we had this shift where like, okay, scalability is the name of the game. Cannabis Creations is great, but my legal company, like registered company, is the censored canvas now because of all the issues that I've run into. Um, it was. It was, this, it birthed this new idea of, okay, let's talk about censorship. Is it going to be a podcast? Is it going to be uh, an art show? That's what I want. I want an art show. And uh, my manager was like, uh, a podcast is far easier than recording an art show, right. but I'm going to do both. Right. So the, uh, the podcast is more, I don't, I mean, I think it's great. And I think it's cool. I love having conversations. It's not high up on my priorities. Uh, I, my network is dialed in. If I'm the best at drawing weed, I know all the best photographers, breeders, cultivars, just seed makers, at, at, like everybody in the industry that's producing their own strains, interesting stories. 
dispensary owners. I know them all. So a podcast would be sweet, but an art show is more, I have more passion about an art show. I love talking, talking is great, but being able to really inspire somebody else to create or even having that as an inspiration for something that's not related to artwork, but they're inspired by me doing something that I'm passionate about. Maybe they'll be passionate about their own thing. Right, right. So the sense of canvas is really just uh, a new avenue of rebranding and people are gonna be like, what the hell is the sense of canvas? And I'd be like, well, I was drawing weed under cannabis creations, but I, because I was censored, la la la. And then people will hop on to censorship because it's so ridiculous nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. It's really bad. Uh, I hate to say, luckily we've been so far so good because that's when the hammer comes down. But, uh, I mean, we just, you know, uh, find other avenues. I mean, we're on Twitter. Twitter seems to be really good as far as not censoring people, but it's also a lot more difficult to build a following. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's that struggle and aspect of it. And then when you, when you are censored for certain things and they just, blanket statement like you said you were selling we no i wasn't uh and you're talking to a robot yeah is there a human being that i can talk to and it's no uh you know it is it is an issue and i think uh it might take some time but uh like everything else facebook knocked off myspace um so we can only hope that somebody else will come out and whether it's a weed tube or some, you know, can of friendly app or hangout place where, uh, you know, we're able to develop a community and a network where we're not censored for talking about a plant, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's, that's what has to happen. You know, it's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. Just cause you know, like I know people that somewhat smoke weed. They don't, they, their identity does not revolve around weed. Like mine does my yeah. I can, entire identity is, cannabis creations a sense of canvas i'm the weed artist i'm the cannabis artist i'm that guy now i know people that like they love weed but they never make that part of their identity and so that's that's the problem is that those people aren't joining fucking weed tube right the only people joining weed tube are like people who that's their identity or i mean uh, yeah. majority of their identity which is where i'm just praying, you know, praying for like more, more countries legalize and give a little bit of leniency. We got to make uh, our voices heard. That's the thing is I'm in talk with a lot of like big names in the industry. That's what the censored canvas hopefully will achieve is like uh, bringing uh, people together to make enough noise to get in touch with the right people to be like, what the fuck is going on? Because I live in Canada. I pay taxes. I run a legal business and my drawings are being removed yeah. from Instagram. That's fucking mind blowing. TikTok, yeah, yeah. another story. I got sixty thousand followers, just like that, gone. No, no notice, just gone. Terrible. Yeah, uh, we will persevere. That's uh, yes, that's how I look at it, and I think that's the mentality we uh -huh. need until we can get over this hump. And uh, but Liam, uh, it's been awesome chatting with you. Uh, let everybody know uh, the best place they oh, can yeah. find you. So if you are interested in seeing my artwork, um, Cannabis Creations, Cannabis Dot Creations on Instagram is pretty sweet. Um, you can take a look at all my latest artwork there. Um, TikTok, you can't find me. Uh, Facebook is a disaster. Um, I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> so, uh, but my website is thecensoredcanvas.com. And you can, if you're interested in purchasing my artwork, I print from $10. They're minis, collectibles, and then I have uh, Canvas as well canvas prints are 150 us including shipping i hope is bundling together uh, free shipping over 200 dollars. so get two canvases i got three canvases uh save 25 percent on each canvas so awesome best place to we'll have artwork. all the links in the description below if you're watching oh, yeah. this on youtube make sure you go down there and smash that like button for my man liam if you like some of the artwork make sure you go down and leave a comment for liam some of the artwork you like and then go hit him up and purchase a print and if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you go down and subscribe to Dro TV because otherwise you would miss amazing guests like Liam, amazing artwork from Liam, and you'd just be you'd be left out. So uh, make sure you go down and subscribe to Dro TV. Liam, thank you again for uh, coming on the show and giving us some time today. Thanks for chatting, man. Appreciate and as it. always, smoke them if you got them.
What's up, Drow TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Drow TV. Thank you for tuning in, and as always, smoke them if you got them.